Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about running gait kinetics. Now, kinematics we discussed in the last video, right? Where we were speaking about the movement in the running gait. Now, we will be talking about the forces that are involved. So, forces are again produced by the muscles, correct? So, we will be talking about your quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes, gastrocnemius, and tibialis anterior. So, all the muscles around your knee joint, ankle, and hip joint, and also some extra muscles like your adductors, iliopsoas, and finally we will conclude the whole topic by talking about your moment, power and energy that works in running gait. So let's start with the topic. First we'll go from top to bottom. So first glutes. So glute maximus, medius and TFL. All of them kind of have a similar job that is they are active in the end part of the swing phase. That means when you are swinging your leg ahead, right? So end part of the swing phase where you need to slow down your glutes will activate correct and the eccentric activity that is as your hip is going into flexion the glutes will lengthen and control that flexion and along with that the beginning of the stance phase that is when your foot is on the ground and you are pushing yourself forward right see if this is the ground you are pushing yourself forward during that hip extension is happening and during hip extension your glutes will fire up right all the hip extensors i mean this whole compartment is the hip extensors which help you in pushing yourself forward so that's when these muscles will be active next going little bit down there is the hamstring so hamstring especially the medial part of the hamstring first the concentric contraction where the muscle will shorten correct so if hamstring is over here and if it's shortening what will it do it will create knee flexion and when is the knee flexion happening during your swing phase right because you have to clear your foot off the ground so mid swing and also the initial swing your hamstrings will concentrically contract and bring your knee to flexion whereas the eccentric activity of hamstring that is basically your hamstring is lengthening correct so what will be happening your knee extension will be controlled meaning gravity will be pulling your knee down and hamstrings will allow the knee to go into extension and this will happen in the late part of the swing okay so your hamstring bends your knee takes it all the way ahead and then it starts extending so that you can put the foot on the ground right so this part of eccentric control of the knee is again done by hamstring during the late swing so that you can put your foot on the ground along with this your hamstring will also cause hip extension because it is attached to the gluteal tuberosity right so it is a two joint muscle it crosses knee joint and hip joint so at hip joint where it is attached to gluteal tuberosity when it contracts it can cause hip extension too so basically it can do two movements simultaneously that is knee extension and hip extension right so that is the function of hamstring next we will go ahead look at the quadriceps the quadriceps as it is attached anteriorly its eccentric activity will control the knee flexion that means during the stance phase when you are putting your foot on the ground there is some amount of force absorption right and there will be some amount of knee flexion that will be happening so now this knee flexion where your whole body weight is coming down right like this so this whole knee flexion will be controlled by your quadriceps by the eccentric activity right <clears throat> so it controls the knee flexion through eccentric activity during early stance and then concentric activity during the swing phase to extend your knee to prepare for your heel strike that means first is this eccentric now you will push off from the ground correct the other leg is in stance phase and then your swing phase starts over here and as the swing phase ends during the end of the swing phase you need to extend your knee right and this extension of knee will happen due to the quadriceps because 
you have to prepare for your heel strike correct so that is what is going to happen in quadriceps so that was about your hamstrings glutes and quadriceps now let's move on to the smaller muscles the gastrocnemius and your tibialis anterior so gastrocnemius starting with that what happens at gastrocnemius is it starts at heel strike okay when your heel strike is happening your gastrocnemius activity will start and it will be continued till you are doing toe off that is from stance phase your other leg is swinging right from stance phase you are pushing off from the ground right you are pushing off from the ground so during the toe off your gastrocnemius will be acting so during the first 15% and also the last 15% of the swing phase your gastrocnemius will be active right basically your stance phase and then pushing off and this pushing off will be done by your gastrocnemius that is the plantar flexion correct next going on to the tibialis anterior over here there will be concentric and isometric activity of tibialis anterior in general okay concentric is what against the gravity it will be creating dorsiflexion and isometric is it will be maintaining that dorsiflexion and where will this happen the activity will happen for about 73% of the gait cycle that's a lot right why because the swing phase in your running gait is much more than the swing phase in your walking so if you compare the tibialis anterior activity in running compared to walking in running the tibialis anterior activity is more that is more time this activity is seen because your swing phase is more and in swing phase you need to clear your foot off the ground so you need dorsiflexion if your plantar flexion is there it can drag on to the ground right so you need the dorsiflexion and this activity will be seen during the swinging of your foot correct okay apart from these main muscles there are also another few muscles like your adductor magnus whose activity is seen for about 25% of the gait cycle during the late stance that is end part of the stance as well as early swing this adductor activity will be seen also iliopsoas which causes hip flexion it is present over here the deep muscle iliopsoas which causes hip flexion its activity will be seen during the swing phase because the swinging involves hip flexion correct around 35 to 60% of the gait cycle and its activity is kind of seen together with your adductor longus that is present in the inner part of your thigh so that was all about the muscle activity now to kind of summarize this whole thing what was seen is in gait that is running gait your moment that is the forces that are created at the joints are much more higher right overall moment is high the power generation like your a2 h3 h1 and k2 all these concentric and eccentric activities or the power generation and absorption that is seen at each joint if you don't know what these terms are that is a2 h3 h1 you can check my video on power generation and absorption that's where i've spoken about all these terminologies all of these compared to walking are much more higher and also talking about the energy saving how in running the use of energy is made efficient is by two ways okay first is segment to segment basically your body can be divided into segments right so if you consider these different segments and then these segments are crossed over by your muscles right so there are like two joint muscles like your hamstring which crosses your hip joint and knee joint so these muscles work like energy straps and help in transfer of energy between these segments and that is one way how running is made more efficient apart from that also the elastic energy that is stored in the tendon right when your tendon stretches it works like a spring it stores energy potential energy which is then converted into kinetic energy by contraction of the muscle or the tendon so that is another way how the running process is made more efficient okay so now to summarize the whole topic we spoke about glutes activity right it causes extension and helps you push off the surface then hamstring helps in knee flexion which helps you clear the floor along with your tibialis anterior and also eccentric activity helps to control the knee extension also quadriceps eccentric activity helps in force absorption during the early stance and concentric activity helps in the heel strike part apart from that gastrocnemius helps you push off the ground 
during the toe off part whose activity starts at the heel strike then we saw how the in, how there is overall increase in moment increase in power and energy saving methods in running gait cycle right so with that we finish up this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video